very useful even as we contemplate algebraic proofs. All right, yes. so there are about four of them, and we are going to see how best we can actually prove that these identities really go so. Because you know, we don't take anything, any ears, say, not true? No, so not around here. All right. So the first one, that one looks familiar, doesn't it? Yes, I think it, it's called the perfect square. Yes, or one, one version. <laughs> right. One of. The, the perfect square with the addition there. And you're saying to me that that's equivalent to um, that expression on the right-hand side. We have a square and we have uh, plus 2ab or 2ab is being added to that. And we have b square there being added to that as well. Hmm. Let's go. Let's see what the others are. That one is familiar as well. We know that one. The perfect, perfect square, square again. But this one is the subtraction version. And I'm just going to look at all four and we're going to actually get the opportunity to prove a few of these. So the third one looks familiar as well, Latoya. And if I look at the right hand side there, it's, we have B square being subtracted from A square. And... I'm sure our students are familiar with that. They usually refer to it as the difference, difference of, two, of squares. two squares. So that one is familiar as well. Fourth one might not be so familiar, but we know that we're actually expanding uh, the double binomial, mm -hmm. right? And so pretty much we're looking at what does that give when it's expanded? And we want to take some time to prove if it's even two of these quickly right. and see how best we can use them to work for us. But I just want to quickly say, Karima, that you're not always going to see A and B. Yes. And this is, this is just the way of expressing it. This is the, what you'd call it. So now. those variables were chosen. They are actually representing um, terms. Right. Yeah. So if you if you see two terms adding to added together and being squared, then you can always expand it in this form. That's, That's the right. word I'm looking for. The general form, form. of representing um, these algebraic identities. Yes. All, All right. right. So starting with the first perfect square, the addition perfect square. So we're going to expand the left side. Yes and um, see if we get the right side. There you All go. All right. So remember that square means that we're actually multiplying uh, the, the, the term, which the added to B, plus, right? right? We're actually multiplying that by itself. Right, and if we were supposed to follow the distribution law and distribute each of the terms in the first bracket and multiply that by each of the terms in the second bracket, then we would get a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared, right? Can and we're seeing like terms that. coming out there. So we have ab added to ab in the middle there, which we can simplify to actually give us 2ab. So I think that one is pretty straightforward. 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 And we can see that they are indeed identical. All right. Equivalent. So Equal. let's look at this one. This one should be pretty much along a similar vein right. as the first one. So it shouldn't be that difficult for our students to see what's happening here. And again, remember the square there is saying that this term, these expressions, sorry, the A subtract B, all of that is to be squared. All right. And again, we're using the distributive uh, property. So that A in the first bracket should multiply all the terms in the second bracket. And similarly, the, 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 the negative B that we have there should also be multiplying every term in the second bracket. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. And we saw that middle um, like terms appearing yes, again in that yes, middle yes. section of the expression and we could actually combine those to give us uh, that middle term which is saying that we should subtract 2ab. Beautiful. All right, so I'm, we're going up on a break but I'm going to leave this one here for our students to try at home yes. and see if when we come back they would have proven these two expressions to be identical. Right, so have a go at it, guys. So we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more mathematics. Soon come.
still here. And so, if you have underlying medical conditions or you're at an increased risk of severe illnesses, a word to the wise is sufficient. Continue to practice all health and safety guidelines or if you are 65 years and over, you might want to continue to stay inside. Your health, yours. Welcome back to Class Time, your daily classroom for c -Sex subjects. If you are just joining us, we are looking at algebraic proofs. And Latoya, just before the break, we would have proven two algebraic identities, yes, right? We did. And we know them as perfect squares. Yes. Right. And so we are now ready to move into another proof. I think we skipped out one though. All right, so let's see what that one is. I think we, just before the break, we spoke about the proof of the difference of two squares. And so we want to expand what's on the left-hand side of that particular identity and see if it gives us what's on the right-hand side. I think we're just about there now, and we are ready to go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> So walk us through that ex expansion of the left-hand side, Latoya. All right. So just like before, we're going to be expanding the left-hand side to prove or disprove <laughs> if it is actually equivalent to A squared subtract B squared. All right. All right. So, of course, using our distributive law, we're going to distribute or through the process of distribution, we're going to multiply each of the terms in the first bracket by each of the terms in the second bracket. All and right. here you can see after we would have distributed. And this one is, is interesting, Natoya, because, yes. uh, you know, as usual, we're seeing that like 
those light terms coming up in the middle. Yes. But I'm looking here and I'm seeing that. There are light terms. Yes. However. But it's working out to be a zero pair. It is. It is. Interesting. So that's A, B, subtract A, B, which would give you zero. Zero. Right. And so indeed, the left-hand side is equivalent to, to the, the right-hand right side. side. So if you see an algebraic expression in the form a squared subtract b squared then you know you could always rewrite it like a squared a subtract b in a bracket by itself multiplied by b added to a right all right all right so let's prove the last one I so while you prove i'll just write the previous one on the board so right. we can refer to them and these are identities that students you might want to Keep in your brain, if you mm -hmm. know them by heart, it will serve you well. Yes, because they're yes. useful and we're going to see how we can use them up as we go through the lesson. All right, so here we have the multiplication of two binomials. And we're saying that if you see an expression in the form A added to X multiplied by B added to X, you can expand it in this form and we're going okay. to prove if that is true now yes and we're going to work on the left side again through the process of distribution so we're multiplying each of the terms in the first bracket by each of the terms in the second bracket now here in the middle section as per usual we're seeing like terms right we are seeing like terms <laughs> yes so we we have here ax and we are adding to that we're adding bx to that, and we see that right. like term coming out. So pretty much, we could actually factor out x right in the middle there, not true? Right. Yes, and if we were to do that, inside our bracket there, we would have a and b being added right in the middle there. So notice we have factored out x, and it looks like what's on the right-hand side. It does. And I just want to point out that in the second row here, even though... Because it is being represented as a algebraic, as an algebraic expression, we couldn't add A to B. Even though they both have the X term there, right. we couldn't say because A, we, B, We X. don't know what the values right, are as right, yet, right. right? But when we have actual values, then yes. we'll see how that plays out. Yes, indeed. All right, cool. So All let's right. see. I'm, I'm anxious. I really want to use up these identities, like, right now. All right, so... Just write back the oh. final identity. And as we're saying, students, you want to remember these identities. It will come in handy when you will have to prove or disprove that um, an expression is equal or equivalent to another expression. All right. So here we have a question. All right. And just by looking at the question, is there any of the identities that we can use to help us in proving that hmm. x squared is equal to 3 added to x multiplied by x subtract 3 plus 9? Hmm. So I'm looking at the board and immediately, let me number these identities so I can quickly refer to them. The third one is actually popping out at me. All right. The third one, which we refer to as uh, the difference of two squares, mm -hmm. that one is popping out at me. So where A was on the board, I'm actually seeing X there on your screen. Mm -hmm. And where B was, I'm actually seeing three there on your screen. So I think we can actually use up this identity. Perfect. Yes. So we can use the difference of two squares identity to substitute. There you right? go. So we already know from our knowledge that these two brackets being multiplied by each other can be simplified to simply x squared subtract, subtract nine. nine. There and you so go. we're going to substitute x squared subtract nine into what we have on the right hand side. And just by the simple substitution, we can see... A zero pair came out right there, right. just popped out at me. So we're actually seeing that the left-hand side is equal or equivalent yes. to the right-hand side. 
Hmm, that's interesting. And you know what I loved? The fact that when we started the lesson, we talked about looking to see which side is, or if any of the side is in its simplest form. Right. Because uh, when we looked at this one, we saw that the left-hand side was actually the side that's in its simplest form. And so we opted to consider the right-hand side right. and see how we could, you know, simplify that as much as is possible for us to do that comparison to make a decision. And you can see that the use or the knowledge and the use of the identities saved us time. There because then we would have had to go and distribute the first bracket across the second bracket. And, you know, it's exam time and you have to move speedy, right? And accurately. And accurately, <laughs> indeed. Right. All right. So here is another question. Wow. Whoopsie. Is there any... <laughs> can we identify any identity that would be useful to help us in proving that this left-hand side is equal or not equal to the right-hand side. Hmm. So I'm looking at the left-hand side, Latoya, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing three added to x in that first bracket, and I'm seeing that that is being squared. Mm -hmm. hmm. So that looks to me like, one of the perfect squares that we talked about earlier. Right. And this one is the one that has the addition in the bracket. Yes. So if I was to go by how they are arranged on my board, mm -hmm. I would definitely opt to use the first identity in the listing here. Right. And so you can just substitute 3 added to x all squared with... And I would just like to point out... I was out, about to say something, <laughs> but go ahead. I would just like to point out how we would have gone ahead to rewrite the identity. Apparently, you read my mind. I think we're <laughs> telepathic. So, on the board, we, have, we are using A and B. Right. Right? But in our question, we have X, X. and 3. And three. And so, how you go about simply rewriting your one expression as another. So, we have x and three. We know that a is our x, so we're right. simply squaring. Right. So, where we have a squared, we would actually now have x squared. So, let me just right. put it right up there. And here, it's two multiplied by a, which in this case is our x right. multiplied by our b, which in this case is 3. Right. All right. So it's 2 multiplied by x, and that is being multiplied by 3. And we know right. we could write those in whichever order based on the fact that we're multiplying. Yes. And so that would actually, let me just put that in bracket quickly. So this is what the middle term would work out to be. Right. And then b squared, and in this case, b is actually 3. three. And so we are... Oh, watch me putting the answer. <laughs> Three squares. So that's how we actually get this expansion going. So the first thing you would then need to do is to identify your A and your B. There you so go. So which value represents A, which value represents B, and just substitute accordingly. Pretty much. All right? Okay, so we would have identified that we're using the addition perfect square. Yes. Right? And we went ahead and said that now 3 added to x all squared is the same as, or could be written as, um, 6x added to x squared and then adding 9. There you go. And we are so going we can to... easily make that substitution now into the question. Right, and you can see where we would have substituted there in right. the second row. And through the process of distribution, we are going to... This time, it doesn't matter. You can use the first or the second bracket to multiply. But we went ahead and used the second bracket, each of the terms in the second bracket, to, to multiply, multiply each of the term to multiply the first bracket, which in turn will multiply each of the terms in the second bracket. So if you look at how it's written on the board, what we have done is that second bracket, because it only had two terms, right. we thought it was a little bit simpler to just, you know, use those two terms to multiply the first expression that we had in the bracket. Right. So again, we're distributing x for the first bracket, which will 
results in x cube and we're adding 6x squared to that and we're also adding 9x. And on the other, in the other bracket, we notice we are distributing that negative, negative four, 4 right to all the terms in the bracket, which leaves us with a beautiful expression there. Okay. I hope our students are seeing that. So the next thing we're going to do is to group our like terms just for ease of simplification. Right, right? because remember, Latoya, we said we, are, we need to be comparing. Right. We emphasize that at the beginning of the lesson that we, each step that we're taking, every time we get to a certain point, we mm -hmm. need to do that comparison. Yes. So as it is now, it is not simplified enough for me to compare to what we have on the right-hand side. Right. All right, so... And Let's through the process terms. of simplification, 6x squared subtract 4x squared will give us 2x squared. Yes. 9x, 9x subtract 24x. 24x will give us negative 15x or subtracting 15x. And then we'll just write back our constant. And here we can see that our left hand, hand side, side is equal to the right, right hand, hand side. side. So we have definitely proven, as we were asked to do, yes. that what we, what we were given on the left-hand side is actually equivalent or equal to what's on the right-hand side. Right. And we see how the identity is useful, not true? Yes. Yes. yes, yes Save yes. us a lot of work, Indeed. you know, with the expansion. So knowing these... Is that plus, not true? It is, it, it is. is. It saves us on time. Because this question was a little bit lengthy. Imagine if we didn't know the identity and we would have had to expand the bracket at top. You know, mm. it, it, it gets a little bit confusing sometimes. So right? we have to just ensure that we're on our A game, yeah? Definitely. Let's see if we have another question. All right, so here is another question. And this question was actually taken from the January 2005 paper, mm. right? So if you are able to answer this question... You're already on your way for CSEC, what? right? All right. Good stuff. So here we have a little lengthy expression on the left-hand side, and they're saying to show by simplifying that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. All right. So I'm looking at this, Latoya, and as we said, we want to see which side is, if there's any that's already simplified. Right. In this particular case, we say that the right-hand side is already simplified. Right. And so we need to work on the left-hand side and see Agreed. how we can compare that, the result, to the right-hand side. And so the, see, we would have identified which side we're working on, which is the left. And now the next thing we need to do is to say to ourselves, hmm, is there any identity, algebraic identity, that can help us in simplifying? Hmm. So let's refer to our identities here. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the first two brackets, uh, so 2x subtract 3, that's in one, and the other one has 3 added to 2x. So yes. I'm looking at that, and it resembles the third identity that I have on the board. I would have used this identity, I think, in the first practice question. Yes? Yes, we yes, did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. So we're actually using it again here. Different values, yes. but uh, same identity nonetheless. All right. That's the only identity? <gasps> oh. I didn't even look over that side. Oh, my goodness. So I'm also seeing the perfect square identity coming out. And this one is the one with the subtraction. Yes. So that looks like number two. So for this question, we're using two identities. Yes, we are. Imagine how we know it and it saves us time. Yes. Yes. So I want to zoom in on expressing the first two brackets as an identity. Now, as you would have said, it's in using different values. Mm -hmm. So you might have seen the 2x and gotten a little bit thrown off to say, oh, it now has a coefficient on the variable, so it might not apply. It does still apply. It can apply because yes. look at this too, as you're saying that, because we just need to identify. You said it or earlier. A. We need to identify our A and, and our, our B. B. So in this case, our, e would have, our A would have been all of 2x yes. and not just the x itself. Mm -hmm. And then our b would have been 3. three. There and you go. We would have just substituted what, we, what is now our a and our b into the general form, which is a go. squared subtract b, b squared. squared. And our go. a is 2x and our b is 3. And of course, we're squaring both the coefficient 
and the, the variable. So the entire term is yes, being Yes, please. And not just the variable. <laughs> so if you have 2x squared, that would not have been correct. We're squaring the entire term. All right. And you also said that we could use the perfect square with the subtraction sign. Yes. And we identify our A and B. There you go. X being A, 4 being B. B. Um, and we would have just substituted. That's correct. All right. So we are going to use now 4x squared subtract 9, x squared subtract 8x, and then and we add in 16, add in to, 16 that. to that. Right. Right. Going to now substitute those into, into our, the left hand side. Yes, there working from the left. Okay. All right, so let's plug those in and see what we have. Just to re re recall <laughs> that these are the identities that we're using and we're just substituting. All Good. right. Expanding the bracket, remember when there's a subtraction sign directly in front of the bracket, it's. We're multiplying by negative one, pretty right? much. What's and inside? The imaginary the one is there. <laughs> Right? So, grouping the like terms and then simplifying. And voila! There you go. The left hand side is actually equivalent to the right, right hand, hand side. side. Yeah, that's wonderful. And you know, I, I, I'm happy that we're allowing our students to actually see what's happening with the identities and yes. how they can actually yes. help us in quickening for want Ease. of a better word yes you know using up our time wisely yes. on the exam conditions so these are really really important mm -hmm. i agree with you karima so you want to um, i want to actually put question four on screen because you know we love to allow our students to Try a little thing yes. in the break while we are working, they are working. Using the hashtag class time on Instagram, All going right. on the Facebook chat and commenting their answers below. All right. You know. So when we come back from the break, yes, we'll actually be picking up on this question and I hope that they get it right. I hope, yeah. they, they're going to. All I right. know that they are. So we're going for our final break. When we come back, we'll wrap things up.
welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're not late. You're just in time. So come, come quick. We are looking at proving if two identical, I, two, two expressions, expressions, sorry, are identical or not. And we're moving right into a question. We were talking about using algebraic identities, identities right. to help us solve our questions. We would have identified four common ones. Right. That is applicable to the CSEC students. Yes. And we've been use, applying that knowledge into simplifying some questions. And here we have another question. And so we are going through a process of first identifying which side if of any if any of the sides of the equal sign left hand or right hand side is simplified and then deciding which side if any side is simplified we're going to use to so which side we're going to simplify to compare with the one that's right. already simplified but so we're looking at the identities in particular now though so let's look at the question that we have on screen so we're seeing 4 added to x, and we're also seeing 2 added to x, and both of these um, expressions are to be multiplied. Right. That's on my left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I'm seeing 3 added to x, and I could almost just say all of that is squared because I notice it's written again as a factor, mm -hmm. right? And then we're to subtract 1. Now, all the questions we did so far, Latoya, we had one side that was already simplified. Very simple. But I find this one interesting mm -hmm. because neither of these sides are actually in their simplest form. Right. And so we will have to be simplifying or at least getting both sides to a point where we can do some rich comparison. Right. All right. So I'm looking at that. And uh, ha, when I look at the left hand side, I was excited because I don't think we have used the fourth identity as yet. Okay. And I looked at that and it just popped right out at me. So I'm thinking that we're going to be using this fourth identity for sure. And we would have used the first one already, but we're going to use it again when we look at the expression on the right, right hand, hand side. So there in this go. case, we'll have to simplify both sides. There you go. To, and then compare the simplified versions. All okay. right. All right. So as you rightly said, we have the right-hand side resembling the identity, um, what we call it, double binomial. Right, multiplying expanding the to, double binomial. Expanding to binomials. So once again, identifying what is our A and what is our B and writing it in the form x squared plus ABX, A, B, A plus B in brackets, x and then a b at the end so okay start by identifying our a and our b so our a in this case would be 4 and our b in this case would be a yes would be 2 would, would be, be just 2 a? <laughs> a is 4 b is 2, two. confusing <laughs> myself right then we are just going to substitute it in our general form as you can see on the right hand side and all right simplifying that would be x squared we're plus adding 6x six six and add 8 right. now let's talk quickly about what we saw on the right hand side and as you said we would have looked at this before so our students are pretty familiar with how to actually do this expansion all right so once expanded we're seeing this result here of uh, x square and we know that we're supposed to be multiplying a by b and multiplying that by 2 as well we're seeing that coming out in the middle there and the last term is supposed to be b squared so once we have simplified or expanded those then these are the results that we're going to now use to answer the question all right so we're just substituting these yes. expressions now into or to, uh, we're actually recreating um, two expressions that we're trying to prove if they're identical. All right. So we just substituted 6x added to x squared and then adding 8 to that for our right hand side. And then we would have substituted the expression here for what was on the Left hand, the right hand the side. Right. Did you just so say? left first and the right. <laughs> oh boy, 
Oh, you're Mixing confused. Up. I am very yes. confused with my But thank size. God it's labeled so our yes. students can see yes. exactly what size. So do what you see to. and not what I see. <laughs> <laughs> All right? All but right. this one is pretty easy. Look how it started out complex. But look at yes. how easy it is. By it's just using, using our identities. identities. Yes. And here again, we can see how it is that our identities can be very useful to us. All right. And we So, see. you know, Latoya, um, I came across this question the other day. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can actually help our students through it. It's, as you would say in your expression, fresh off the press. Fresh so off the press. So, this question was actually from January 2021, as in 2021, this as year. As in last month? Last month. As in probably three weeks ago? Yes. This Fresh. question came on the exam that asked the students to show that what we have on the left-hand side is equal to what's on the right-hand side. Now, looking at this, I'm seeing where the best thing to do here is to actually get this to become one expression. Okay. So, we can quickly pick up our LCM which is our one subtract x. Now, one subtract x into itself is actually one time, and one multiplied by x is x. Now, I have this 4x, and you may be saying, so how should you do in LCM? Remember that 4x is equivalent to the denominator being one. Now, one into one subtract x is actually one subtract x. So let's quickly put this up because I know that our time is going, but I really wanted to expose our students to this. Now here, it's pretty easy now to simply expand our distribute as we have been doing. So we now have x subtract 4x and negative 4x multiplied by negative x is actually 4x squared. And you may be wondering, so this is still not looking like what we have on the next side. Let's simplify it some more. So I'm going to write my 4x square first, mm -hmm. and let's see what does this piece give us. x subtract 4x is actually negative 3x. And here you're seeing it coming out now that if we factor out x, so let's factor out x and see what we have. Oopsie. Are you seeing what's happening here? Yes, it's actually equivalent to it's what? It's actually equivalent to the right-hand side. All right. Very good question. I'm hoping our students will catch up on that. All right. So just as we wrap up quickly, remember we don't, um, we prove in math, we don't make assumptions. And if you get a question, you just simply prove that one side is equal to the other side. There you right? go. Right? So that's all for today. Class time resumes tomorrow at 9 a.m. Until then, keep safe. Wash your hands. Sanitize. Hand. Wear, Wear your mask. mask. <laughs>